What's going on, Wire World of YouTube? It is Evil Breed back with another no bullshit guide. Anyway, uh, what I have today for you guys is Gears of War 4. I know, one that actually is relevant in the media right now somewhat. Um, I rented it from Gamefly. Come on, guys, give me a fucking heads up. Let me know if you want to partner with me or not. Anyway, I rented it from Gamefly, and I played it the campaign pretty much straight through. I did about four hours on the Twitch stream, and I did about five to six hours on just plowing through it a week later when I had time. I uh, just wanted to go ahead and do a quick review for you guys and let you know exactly how I felt about the campaign. I will have a comprehensive multiplayer and horde mode uh, Gears of War review once I have Xbox Live for a month, which probably won't be till after the first because I have to wait till I get paid. Once I have that, I will go ahead and I will do a review for that. That way you guys know exactly what's going on with the multiplayer if you're curious. Anyway, the story of Gears of War 4. Now, actually, excuse me. I want to let you guys know, this is the fourth installment, technically fifth installment, excuse me, of Gears of War. It follows the story of Gears of War 3 that was on the Xbox 360. It is technically the fifth because there was Gears of War Judgment, which was a prequel all about, I think, Foxtrot Squad or Delta Squad. It was a squad with Damon Baird and Coltrane prior to the meeting Marcus Phoenix. So that game wasn't that great, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, it's it, this game follows the story of Gears of War 3 20 years after the events that happened in the Insurgents Day or E-Day in Gears of War 3 and the events that happened during then. So the game begins basically with you playing a new kid. The new kid just so happens to be Marcus Phoenix's son. Oh, I know. Spoilers, right? You couldn't tell that from the fucking trailer. Well, if you couldn't, I'm sorry, you know, but, you know, logic dictates you should know that by now. But anyway, the story follows uh, J.D. Phoenix, or, you know, the son of Marcus Phoenix. He's started all kinds of crazy shit, and now, of course, you have to play him through the events of Gears of, of this, this Gears game. Um, it's got an amazing story arc. The way the game, you know, it hits an apex like, oh my god, there's a whole sequence after about four and a half hours, and then it, you know, it dwindles a little bit, and then it fucking booms right back up, and then it basically plateaus out, and then you hit this giant spike at the end, and it's just unbelievable. Um, the character development in the game was actually very well done. I have to admit, it, it reminded me a lot of Gears of War 3. It didn't it didn't feel as flat as Gears of War Judgment as far as the characters were concerned. It felt really good. So the characters definitely were engrossing. They were cinematic. They really make you you know feel for those characters like a good Gears game should. Um, the, um, the glorious character development also led to you know, how worried I was because Judgment was such a piss poor game. And of course, for those that don't know, Halo 4 was a game that was very similar to this situation. Halo was slated, you know, after, of course, Bungie said, we're done, we're going to move on with our, our projects, they sold Halo to Microsoft, Microsoft made Halo 4, and well, for those that don't know, Halo 4 wasn't that great. Halo 5 was much better, of course, because 343 pulled their head out of their asses and produced a much better game. I was worried this was going to go down the same route, and it doesn't. It really doesn't. Gears of War 4, it, it really, it's, it's Gears. Like, it has the same fan base and the same story structure and the same shooting structure and everything we love about Gears of War. Um, motion capture of this game, even though it was for the Xbox One, was just unbelievable. I, I was I was astounded. It, it, it was motion capture for the cutscenes that literally reminded me of the motion capture we saw in games like Uncharted and Last of Us and the stuff that Naughty Dog produces. Because those that don't know, Naughty Dog does some of the best mocap scenes ever created. You know, even better than what Square Enix would do. But they're just unbelievable. So I would definitely say the mocaps were just really nice. Now, even though the game is obviously locked to 30 frames per second on the Xbox One, and if people say, oh, it plays 60 frames per second, no, it doesn't. If it, even though it was locked to 30 frames per second on the Xbox One, I have to be honest, it plays extremely well, and I didn't see a lot of frame spike. Now, I know that there's a lot of games that say we play at 30 frames per second locked, but you have frame spikes that go up and then go down and then like you blow up a car like in GTA 5 and then everything goes to shit you know the, it didn't have a lot of those frame spikes which made me really happy you know no frame spikes equals no moments where it really pulls you out of the immersion so that was really nice 
Um, there wasn't even a lot of scenarios like that that would have given the frame lag and things like that because everything was well rendered. You know, the backdrops were really, really pretty. They were they were really, really well rendered. They didn't look like cheap paintings that they just overlaid on the actual image. They actually looked like they were rendered in 3D software. So it really it worked out really well. Now the voice acting, as 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 you guys know, there's a whole coup going on right now with voice actors all over the world, unfortunately. But the voice acting in this game was fantastic. It was all the same characters that we know and remember from the previous Gears of War games. Of course, you know, I'm not going to disclose anyone who was actually in it and who wasn't in it. I'm just going to say the Gears cast. Uh, of course, all the new people that we saw too. I did notice that the girl that was in the games, the, the protagonist, uh, his girlfriend, she kind of sounded a lot like Anya Strauss. So I'm assuming it was probably Tara Strom or whoever does the voice of uh, Anya Strauss from the previous Gears games doing her voice too. I mean, it sounded very close to Anya from the Gears of War 3. But anyway, I mean, it's like, you know, saving a few bucks just by hiring the same voice actor, whatever. Now, like I said, the backdrops are really gorgeous. They were rendered. They're not cheap paintings and things like that. The sound, um, and a lot of people say sound's not important. To me, sound is, is extremely important, especially in a shooter. Because if the rifles and the guns and the pistols all sound like shit, well, then you're, you're not going to be as immersed. Like, Gears of War 1, the, the hammer burst sounded like some pretty crap. Now, you're going to give it, of course, a lot of leeway because it was the first in an installment. But it still sounded like shit. You know, this game, they updated a lot of the sound effects. I mean, they took some of the sound effects and just made them better. You know, obviously, Lancer sounded very similar. The Chainsaw sounded very similar. It's just they had a little bit more, a little more bass in them, a little more rumble to the sounds, a little more gut feeling when you're actually firing and shooting. So the sounds was great. The graphic, up, the updated graphics and everything like that, it was, oh my god, it was... The, the, when you give someone in this game, it's really cool because it's like, you know, it's chunks flying. Now, it's not like Shadow Warrior Gibbs where it's ridiculous, but it's Gears of War Gibbs where it looks pretty cool. You know, you, you chainsaw somebody and you chop them into pieces. I mean, I did almost all the executions with weapons, including the heavy weapons and stuff like that. And there was some awesome shit in there, I'm telling you guys. The uh, executions were unbelievable, and I can't wait to see them in multiplayer. So, like I said, I don't have live. I'm waiting to get live. As soon as I have live, I will power through Gears of War multiplayer. I'll probably get the first 20 or 30 levels in Gears of War multiplayer and then turn around, do horde mode for a good few hours, to, just so I can get a fair review for those. Um, uh, this, of course, is a plus minus, but the Locust. Now, the Locust, this, some of the familiar faces we know from the Locust crowd did return, but there was a lot of new ones. And I'm not complaining that there was a lot of new ones and that we that a lot were missing, but I do want to say, like, one of my favorites, the Boomer, wasn't present in the game. I mean, he was for about three seconds in the very beginning of the game, but the Boomer wasn't there. And I always like the Boomer just because it freaks you the fuck out when you're playing and all you hear is, boom, and it's like, oh my god, run away! Because you know shit's about to hit the fan. You know, I always like that. I mean, there's there's new enemies. I mean, new scions and new crazy shit and, new, and all new enemies. Don't get me wrong. Where it literally fights where you're, you're, you're just saying, fuck, 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 and running around the entire time because they're that hard. I mean, the boss fights leads me into the boss fights were unbelievable. The boss fights were actually a challenge, most of which were a puzzle where you actually had to figure shit out and it didn't just blatantly say, here's what you need to do. One of them, it did say, here's what you need to do, but you still had to figure shit out. Otherwise, Marcus would yell at you like a little bitch during the fight because you couldn't figure things out. And that was really funny, too, because Marcus, he would always be yelling at you because you were his kid. You're playing as, you know, his son, son uh, JD or John. I think it's John, but anyway. You're playing as his son, and literally anytime you do something stupid, he's yelling at you like your dad would. Like, don't do that, you jackass. You know, it's just, and of course, all I hear is Bender's voice just with a guttural tone because it is the same voice actor. So, uh, the story, it's, it's decently length. Um, it's not like, oh, this is the longest game ever. No, it's a campaign shooter with a heavy multiplayer content like Call of Duty, like Battlefield. So I would honestly say the story of Gears of War is actually extremely well done. Um, but it's only about 10 to 12 hours, and it's probably about 14 if you're actually looking for collectibles. So I would honestly say, I mean, it's a decent length for a shooter. Not bad. I mean, I plowed through it on the lowest difficulty because when I'm just trying to plow through a game, I plow through on the easiest difficulty to get through it. Then I go back through in the harder difficulties to get the achievements. I'm not an achievement hound. I'm a person who enjoys products. So I definitely enjoyed the story. Now, I did play back through it. played through the first portion on normal. And it has the appropriate challenge you would expect from a Gears of War game, too. It's like, you know, you get shot with a sniper rifle, you get shot. The Locusts are much more intelligent in this game. Even on its lower difficulties. They will chainsaw your ass if you get too close. If they sneak up behind you, they will execute you. So, good luck. <laughs> Now, the, the biggest thing, too, and I would honestly say this applies to all Gears of War games, and I'm glad it was in this one, is the constant adrenaline rush. Gears of War kicks the game off with the slow beginning, and then boom, adrenaline rush from the get-go all the way to the end. 
you're just pumped full of adrenaline while you're playing this game. You know, it's almost like you don't want to put it down unless you actually have something to do other than play video games. And if you do have time, fuck, plow through it, whatever. You could probably plow through it in sitting. Whatever. It's a Gears of War game. You're going to plow through it multiple times anyway for certain achievements. Gears of War 2 has one of the technical impossible achievements in the world. It has Seriously 2.0. Kill 100,000 enemies in the campaign. That is hard as shit. That requires like 10 playthroughs, if not more. So there you go. But yeah, Gears of War 4, un unbelievable product, unbelievable game. I really, really enjoyed this game, guys. Like it was, it was just fantastic. I'm actually, this is my first five out of five. You know, I have to actually make a button for this one. Five out of five Mohawks for this game. Don't worry, I'll actually get my Mohawk cut back in this weekend. So I won't be wearing hats all the time anymore. Um, but yeah, like it was, it was fantastic. I have another five out of five coming. It's an older game. It's actually, uh, going to be reviewed as well. Like I said, I'm not made of money, so I play games when I can play them. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, I would honestly say, yeah, definitely check it out. Hang out for a, a week or two on the review for multiplayer. I'll have it up as soon as I have live. Like I said, I have to wait till the first, but as soon as I have live, I'll play multiplayer on Gears of War 4 and let you guys know how the multiplayer and the horde mode is because I loved those in Gears 2 and Gears 3. So, um, thank you guys very much for watching the video. Please go ahead and like and subscribe to these videos. I really, really could use your guys' help. I'm trying to make YouTube a career. I'm trying to make this a full-time job. I'm trying to help me pay some of my bills. And the only way I can do that is with your guys' help. So, thank you guys very much. Check out my Twitch stream for some awesome, more WoW content. And have an awesome night.